Howdy, Rooster. Let's go. Think that about do it, Mr. Lambert. Do you need instruction? I think we'll make out all right. All right, then. Well, welcome to the future. <laughs> Yes, we have a telephone right here. I'm certain I read it was an iceberg. I sure feel terrible for their families. They said that big old ship couldn't be sunken. Yes, yes. Well, she said they were going to Memphis instead. Of course, I'm sure you will. Uh-huh. And I'll be telephoning you as well. Okay, Dee. You'll be the first to know. We're going to name him Wendell. But yes. No. Our boy's doing fine. Just fine. Wendell. He's our little firecracker. Yes, sir. We've just been telephoned by Dr. Scott. Hello, Joan. Can you give me Martha down at the florist? Everyone says it'll be the last tour ever. Well, I'm just glad it's over. I believe William and Sanders boy will be coming home this week. Well, that's great news, Mr. Green. I worked very hard for this one. Wait till I inform Florence. Yes, I'll be expecting one of her prized pecan pies for this one. Wendell, no telephone today. <laughs> oh, you know we won't be strangers. Our new home in Walnut Ridge, Arkansas is just a hop, skip, and a jump away. We'll be home for a Christmas visit. <laughs> Hello? Are you there? Renew our trust in you, that by the power of your love, we shall one day be together again. And we shall always remember Wendell Lambert, born the 9th day of December, 1913, to Cicero and Florence Lambert. May he eternally rest in peace. Oh, no. Don't worry about it. Listen, Dave, Claudia's got to be getting right back to Omaha, so I'm going to be selling my house and moving back to the family home with Mom. Okay. Well, I was hoping your wife could get my listing on priority down at the realty office. You know, skip one more thing off my mind. Well, okay, let me get with Charlotte on that. She has some retirees coming in from Little Rock, and they were looking for a small task in the middle of rice field. Who knew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird like me, right? Hey. Said it, not me. All right, bye. Well, look at you. seen you before. Hey mom, where'd this come from? Oh, that was your father's. Given to him by your grandfather, Cicero. According to Wendell, his parents bought that back in 09. But Pop wasn't even born till 13. Yes, it was around before he was. How come I didn't know about this? It's, it's pretty neat. Well, as you can see, it doesn't work anymore. So we just put it away, 
Well, I don't think we had that out since we married. Hmm. Kind of like it. Mind if I fix her up and hang her up? <laughs> sure. I've forgotten about it. <laughs> wow. You've got no guts. No offense. Missing Magneto and the list goes on. June 9th, 1909? What the? Oh. Alright, I'll get back to you later. of light, you can tell that the laser is losing its focus. In this case, we would want to try to make a collimated beam with less diffraction. So as you can see, restraining the monochromatic light of the laser to an infinite collimated beam without diffraction, of course, is the perpetual goal in laser advancement. With that, most experts in the field believe this will never happen, at least not in our lifetime. Yeah. That is until the aliens gives us a new heads up on some technology. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know like they did back in Roswell. <laughs> Ricky, you're in your third year as a sophomore, right? Ooh. Sixth overall? Ooh. Second time you've taken my class alone? Hey, what can I say, Professor Lambeau? I'm older than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, though. We all know we didn't have lasers, indestructible flight recorders, satellite and cellular communication, solar cells. Who knows what the aliens came in 1947? Well, Horseshack and Barbarino, you forgot the breeder reactor and integrated circuitry leading to development of the microchip. But that's not the point. See? Even Mr. Lambert knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'm calling you here. I want individual theories by next Monday. We still team. Show Dr. Lindemann. I'll be acing your advanced course next semester. Count on it. Hey, Dr. Lindemann. Tim. I apologize for not being able to make the service for Wendell. We, we didn't get back into town until very late. It's all right. We kept it small. You know, Pop, never really was a show-off. Is there anything I can do? Nah, but thank you, though. All right, then. See you at the faculty lunch in tomorrow. Uh, yeah. You know, Doc, there is something. You're the physics guru around here. Tell me, could a 1909 Julius Andre telephone work with today's fiber optics? Assuming we're talking no contemporary modifications. Well, the total internal reflection of today's cables from the glass fiber core and the cladding's contrasting refractive index, I think would see to it that the uh, multiplexing switchboard requirements of an Andre and Sons wouldn't hang around forever. Okay. So what does that mean in the real world? It means you've got yourself a nice wall decoration. Thanks.
So, what do you think? Well, it's broken down, doesn't function, but it looks pretty good hanging around. Kind of like your old mother. So you're saying it's a keeper? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care what it takes. I'm going to get this thing fixed tomorrow. I'm, we'll get it going. all that mom did you hear that this telephone ring and some crazy man yelling through it no I heard you bumping into everything sorry I must have been coming out of a dream or something <sighs> nobody sleeps around here anymore don't forget we need to return those soda bottles to mr. Osborne's tomorrow good night I'm on it wrong number very wrong number. I just came from the, the Johnsons, so Mr. Johnson had to go to the hospital. Oh, oh. Hold on, have you seen that? Okay. Hey, Jeannie. Are you harassing your mom again, Tim? You know there's such a thing as problem child syndrome. Problem child syndrome. So that's the thing, huh? Like a real medical condition? Ask your mom. All the proof you'll ever need. <laughs> Jeannie, I think he's bored is what I think. Oh, he seems like a pretty busy guy to me. I don't mean like that. I mean, he needs someone. Well, that'll do it. Here, I'll use her a bit off right now, but mm -hmm. I'm sure it's only temporary given what's been going on. You doing okay? We're kidding there. Bless your heart, I have been so busy at work. Alrighty. Straight Row Woods? My Straight Row Woods? There's a tree. Come on now, quit messing around. How did you do that? How did you get my phone to ring? Who's there? Hey, Mother didn't know me then, but you do believe me, don't you, Wanda? Somebody from before was calling you? I don't know, Pop. Who was it? I'm not sure, Tim, but the young girl calling couldn't tell me where she was. She just kept saying odd things and kept repeating, hello, are you there? Over and over. You hear that, Claudia? I think Paul's yanking us. What do you think? Don't be goofy.
H hello? Yeah, I I'm here. Who who's this? Are you there? Is it still 1909? 1909? It's 1932. Don't you know anything? Say, are you a wisecracking lady? I don't know what or where I am. I don't even know when I am. So did she ever call back again? Nope. But I did get a strange call about five years ago, though. But I don't know how, because I had sold all the working parts from it by that time. Who was it this time, Pop? Sounded like a young man. He said his name was Dean, and he was looking for Kathy. Your mother was there for that one. I didn't hear anything. Only you sounding like a madman. Anyway, that was that call from this Dean or Kathy was the last one. I remember it well. December 3rd, 1958. Well, Pop, I guess I inherited your delusions. You got me good on that one, I'll give you that. Yep, good one, Pop. You always had to have the last let. Why are you messing around like this? Where do you live? I'm not sure any of that really matters. What are you doing here? Are you lost? I need help finding her. Oh no, it's not enough that I'm hearing voices now, I'm seeing them. What's your name? Tim Lambert, what's yours? Dane. Dane Hall. Is someone missing? Kathy. Kathy? You know her? Yes. I mean, no. You asked for her on the phone, right? Yes. But not by name. I said I was lost. Well, if you're lost, might just come up to the house and knock on the door. I can't leave this spot. It won't let me. My voice can't be heard outside of this spot. You would not have heard me from over there. Okay, then how in the world did you get my phone to ring? It doesn't even work for Pete's sake. Who's Pete? <laughs> Come on, how did you get my phone to ring? It's an old Indian trick. <laughs> no, really, it is. You see, there was this old Indian gentleman. He taught me how to use my will to connect with those outside of this area. He taught me the rules. When I'm calling for her, I can feel that there's someone there, on the other side, listening. I just didn't know I was calling your telephone, sir. Just wish I had been able to contact her, or at least someone smarter. You said hello. How could you not know you were calling my phone? Isn't that what people say when they're calling out for someone or going for their attention? So where is he at now? This Indian guy. Oh, do uh, you mean Whispering Rock? He's... he's gone. He went on a good while ago and I haven't seen him since. Seems you know your situation pretty well. So, how is it that you're lost? I'm lost because I've never been here exactly before. I'm from Illinois. Kathy and I were traveling to Louisiana and doing a good job of it too. I took a ride onto a gravel road and something happened from out of nowhere. How do you know where you are? You told me on the phone about this spot that only the locals know. Whispering Rock told me. Listen, I can't find Kathy. She was with me the last thing I remember before everything turned to crew. Wait, when was that? 
We were traveling in September. It's September now. Still? September. What year? 1957, of course. September 1957? Look, uh, I'm late for work. I'll, I'll, I'll see you around. I... No, sir, please don't go. I need help. I. Your antiparticles are in the right place, but this here will not allow governance over the poly exclusion. What's with the attempt to revise the Dirac equation anyway, Tim? I don't know. I know what you're after. But this equation has been around for more than 60 years. Don't you think the outcome you're looking for would have been discovered by now? Okay, so assuming one or the other had to be possible, which would have the higher probability of actually happening? Time travel? Or, um, how do I say this? Ghosts? I think the real question here is, are you all right? No, uh, I'm serious, Tim. Are you okay? I, I know it's been hard lately, but my goodness. I, I'm fine, really. I just... Look, I want to level with you. You know that phone I've been asking you about that doesn't work? Well, it's been ringing. Someone's on the other end of the line. You know, there have been many documented cases over the years of post-traumatic hearing voices, seeing apparitions even of recently deceased family members or otherwise. It might be some sort of unfinished work that you feel guilt over. No, it's not that. It's, it's a kid from 1957. You know what? I think it was a dream. Yeah, I think we're calling it a dream. I was just confused. It made me seem to relax and sleep a little better. For what it's worth, physics isn't limited to the boundaries that our brains are limited to. There might be possibilities out there that we just haven't been made privy to. Or if we have, we just can't fathom. Don't be too hard on yourself, Tim. But just the same, there's no need to talk about this to anyone else at this school, right? We would sure miss you around here. Yeah, I think you're right. Go home and hug Wanda for me, Tim. And for yourself, too. Y'all coming or going? Oh, hey, Pete. Just leaving for the weekend. She's all yours. But tomorrow is only Friday. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Hmm. So you're it. You're the one, huh? Oh my goodness. Can you help me? 
sir? I'm the one who needs help. Kathy? Why, yes. Yes, I am. You heard my plea. Yeah, I heard your plea. So can you help me? I'm not sure where I am, and I can't find my boyfriend, Dean. No offense, young lady, but you're in the right place, and you haven't seen him? Then how do you know to be here? Wait, let me guess. It's an old Indian trick, with Spring Rock. Oh, you know him. Oh, geez, no, I don't know him personally, but I have met Dean. The young man you are looking for? Here? You met him here? Yeah, he was looking for you. He told me you guys were traveling through here and something happened, but he doesn't seem to remember the rest. Yes. If he's here too, then where is he? I haven't heard from or seen him. I don't know. I don't know why or how either of you are here. Quantum mechanics doesn't even... That thing doesn't even work. What thing? That stupid telephone. Dean! Kathy is here! He won't hear. I've tried so many times. I'm sorry, Kathy. I can't just make him be here. I know. Hey, uh, I'm Tim. Tim Lambert. <laughs> Your hair is odd. It's the style. <laughs> style? Not that I've seen. Well, it is 1989. Maybe you ought to get with it. Oh, wait. The last you remember is 1957, right? Dean? Dean? No, 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 no. I'm not a loon. I believe you. Dean! Dean! Kathy? Kathy? Kathy! Tim! I thought I heard Kathy! I mean, you just did, she was just here. Kathy! Kathy! Kathy? Kathy, are you here? Kathy Dean is here! Listen, you guys aren't dead, are you? Dead? No. No way, man. Look at me. I'm as perfect as I ever was. So, you don't know what happened to make you get here? Like I told you before, we were driving and everything just went blank. I didn't see or hear anything that would... <sighs> man alive, she was just here. I know it. We were so close. I... I feel like a frame. Well, may not be much, but maybe I could peg you on the old switchboards and you could talk to each other on my telephones. Are you looking for a knuckle sandwich? This ain't even real. This ain't even happening. Huh? <laughs> Tim, where are you going? She was just here, right? We were almost together again. Tim! Mom, don't think I'm crazy, but did It's a little late for that. What was that? Oh, nothing. What were you saying, dear? 
you remember the story that Pop told us about the telephone when I was about 14 or so? You know, the one about the voices. Mm. Come on, you know, the one about the Dean and Kathy voices he talked about. Vaguely. Did you think it was serious? Did you ever know for sure? I can't remember. Huh, that phone has been ringing nonstop. And those Dean and Kathy characters keep talking through it. Tim, you're working too much. Really, though? You know Jeannie's going to stay and visit with me a while today. She says she has a light schedule and needs to burn some time until her 3 o'clock. It's great, Mom. Some quality girl time, huh? Darn it, Tim. Can't you see what I'm trying to do here? When are you going to pull the trigger with Jeannie? Mom, I'm really busy with work and other things right now. I like Jeannie. We went on a few dates, you know. Don't act like I'm being stubborn. Besides, I'm really not trying to rush myself into divorce number two with anyone. I'm good. Tim, stay here a minute. Okay. Why are you always trying to play Cupid? Just sit and listen. Did your father ever tell you about the bus trip we had? Hmm. No. No postcard story neither? Don't think so. 1943. I was going from Parma, Missouri to St. Louis. This Navy man talked my ear off the whole way there. He was going from Bernie, Missouri to St. Louis. St. Louis, Springfield, and Chicago. Departing now. Lane one, heading for St. Louis, Springfield, and Chicago. Departing now. Lane one, departing for St. Louis, and Chicago. Boarding now. Lane 1, departing for St. Louis, boarding now. Lane 1, departing for St. Louis, Springfield, and Chicago, departing now. Lane 1, departing for St. Louis, Springfield, and Chicago, departing now. Hi. Wanda. Wanda. Nice to meet you, Wanda. So, is it St. Louis or Chicago? St. Louis. Mm, nice. Where are you headed? Uh, same. Except a little later I'll be heading off to Frisco. Oh, what for? I'm just stationed out there, being a sailor and all. It's just the line of duty that I'm in. He was humming Glenn Miller and clapping to his own humming, even when he wasn't talking. that we lived only 12 miles apart in the middle of nowhere for our entire lives, yet had never met one another before. Only 200 people between the two towns. Do you know what they call that? Destiny? That's right. Now moving ahead a few months, Wendell and I stayed in contact with each other by letters even though we'd only met each other that one time. Now, unbeknownst to him, I had also sent a postcard to this other man I had been writing letters to, Gary. I'd never met Gary in person. You know, one of those pen pal things? He was in the Army. Mom, I don't need to hear this. Now, hold on. So I wrote a postcard to your father. And I signed it to my favorite sailor, Wanda. I also wrote a postcard to Gary, and I signed it to my favorite soldier, Wanda. Well, I accidentally addressed the postcard to your father, you know, the sailor, to Gary, the soldier. And the card meant for Gary went to pop. That's right. My Wendell, thank you for letting me know you're safe after the Marshall Islands Okinawa incident on your ship. We still have another bus trip to make together. 
This time to, where is it? Walnut Ridge, Arkansas? The boutique is quite the interesting job in this busy city. Please come back safe and I'll be here all the while listening to G. Miller and thinking of you. To my favorite sailor, Wanda. Dear Gary, the radio says there were more dangers than usual at your army station. Be careful and don't worry about the souvenir. You boys have more to think of. I'm sorry you have to eat those rations. Yuck! To my favorite soldier, Wanda. So what happened? Well, they were both good sports about it. But the chain of letters that came from the mistake I made to Wendell's card. Well, I just knew he was going to be my one. Do you know what they call that? Fate. Well, if you want to be scientific about it, yes. But I like to call it a happy accident. Now, if I can't offer anything else to this world, I can offer you this much. As I said, I can offer you this much. Well, I'm going to go ahead and work on this project they got from our class. So, uh, Tim, who do you got tonight? The Bobcats or the Mustangs? I don't know. I thought I'd head over to Kevin's and watch the TGIF tonight. Are you going to the game? Well, I thought about it, but I didn't have anybody to go with. I need to work on my project. Look at him, bobbing and weaving like he's Marciano. <laughs> what? So, what are you going to stick me with today? Well, let me see. I have a three inch 10 gauge needle on here that has been whispering your name all morning. <gasps> Wonderful. <laughs> Can I get a catheter with that? This is Lambert. Hey, I think your results come in sometime soon, but no need to worry. I think they're gonna be just fine. You know, I'm here anyway. This is one of your old tricks, huh, Pop? If that guy Dean shows up here, I'll have the tape. Tim? Close enough. Kathy? Tim, I think I know what's going on. Yeah, what's that? What is that? Oh, this here. This is just some surveying equipment. I believe this is where Dean and I... I believe this is where we might have crashed our car. Really? Tim, I think we're dead. How do you know this? Did, did Dean tell you? No. I still can't find him. I just remember that we were driving. I do remember that we were passing through Arkansas. Is this Arkansas? It sure is. I was looking through my purse, and Dean was trying to clear up the radio station, and I heard a rattle and noise and felt a lot of bumps. Then... Everything went blank. Unless that was a dream, I think we might have crashed. Right here. Jeez, Kathy, I'm sorry. Wait a second. I was old enough to remember this. A kid, of course, but 
old enough. Oh, of course. I was in Aunt Dixie's that entire summer. In Missouri. Excuse me, sir? Oh, uh, nothing, I'm... Um... You know what, Kathy? I can find out for sure if that's what happened. I can tell you everything. I'll be back, okay? I'll be back. Hey, little guy. Hey, Debbie. Is Mr. Fran in? No. No, honey, you don't believe he's around here. He's right here. Hey, Mr. Fran. Hey. Do you happen to have any 1957 editions? What for? Looking for one of your weather reports? No, actually, I'm looking for something else this time. Do you happen to remember a car accident at Straight Roll Woods near my place around 57? Probably September. Might have been a couple of out-of-towners. I'm not sure. Uh, you can go through our back catalog and archives. Any idea what edition or what week of the year it would have been printed? I, I don't know. I don't. Could I just take a look? Sure, come on back. You know, I do remember that was the first year my dad had me interning here. And I remember smoke up about that from everyone around here. And if I recall, it was right after my junior high ball practice. And so I'm guessing it would have been around uh, September. If that helps. Yeah, yeah, it does. Mr. Frank, could I borrow this? Uh, I'll bring it right back. Okay. Just be careful with that. Dean! Dean! Kathy? Kathy? Dean? I got your paper. Never cross this way again. All we had, we may never have again. Kind of like Ted, Dr. Pepper in the summertime. Throw in my pocket. Well, it looks like me that <laughs> the weather. It's going to be either just he's going to do two things today. It's going to rain or the sun's going to shine. And I'll tell you one thing, big thing. If it rains today like it's supposed to, there ain't no way the sun's going to shine or anything. I want to thank you. Rice or 
Anything like that, I do know. want to thank you for making me who I am. These days may never come this way again, and I want you to know that you're. doing great. Oh, there we go. How's that feel? Oh, all my dancing days are over. Oh, Ow! No. Oh. You're doing oh. great. Hi, I do. Oh. Mom, oh. do you remember when I was quarantined in Aunt Dixie's with rheumatic fever? Oh, of course. You know, back around 57, 58? Yes. Well, do you remember a car accident in the woods around that time? I sure do. Why are you asking about it? Just, um... Hello, <laughs> dear. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, Jeannie's here, and we're doing uh, our. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on. Is that Claudia? Yes. Ask if she remembers Pop's stories about the telephone. You know, Dean or Kathy. <laughs> oh, nothing. Oh, Tim's on his dad's old stories about those mysterious telephone calls. Uh huh. Oh, uh, okay. She doesn't remember any stories about a telephone. Okay. Mm, I'm back here. Huh? Yeah. Well, I've got to go That's enough of that. <laughs> Telling me. Oh. Okay. Is anyone there? Hello? Is anyone there? Can you help me? Hello, it's me, Tim. Oh. oh, I'm going to be late for the last one of the day. Oh, okay. Go. Bye, Wanda. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, don't forget those exercises. Whatever you say. What are you doing? Hey, I saw it in a movie once and it worked for them. Dean and I talked to Kathy. She's here? Not now, but she was. Listen, I, I think I know what's happening. You see, I'm just in a dream and I'm just stuck. That's why everything seems the way it does. I finally figured it out. I'm not sure you really remember. You see, I've got this news article here. I don't remember what. 
What news article? Oh, not you, Kathy. I was talking to Dean. K Kathy? No, I wasn't talking to you, Dean. Kathy thought I was talking Dean? to you. Dean? Kathy! Dean, Kathy, can you Kathy, where are you? Can you Kathy, are you here? Stop. Dean? Stop. Stop. Kathy. Stop. Nobody speak. Listen. Kathy? Dean is here. Dean? Kathy is here. Dean? Can you hear me? It's no use, Kathy. He doesn't hear you. Dean? Say something. Something. Kathy, did you hear that? Hear what? She doesn't hear you, Dean. What's in that newspaper there? This is what you want to know. A, a newspaper? This was printed on Wednesday, September 25th, 1957. A car driven by a young couple passing through Walnut Ridge was involved in a singular vehicle accident on the late evening of Monday, September 16th. Local police believe the car lost control and was driven off the road unprovoked, crashing into straight rural woods. Victims of the crash were 19-year-old Dean Hall, 18-year-old Kathy Torrance, both of Belleville, Illinois. No. No, we're here right now! I knew it. I just knew it. When is it? Right now? As I said before, it's September 1989. What's with 1989 all the time? Come on! That's a lot of years. You know, my pop told me about both of you once, back around 64. He said that you, Dean, called him on that same telephone. But nothing came of it. Well, ain't that a bite? So are we in heaven or something? I don't know. I don't think I can help either of you with that. I don't know anything, it seems. You don't know what? Can't help with what? Dean wants to know if y'all are in heaven. We're not. If we were, we'd be together. You know, both of you managed to call me on that telephone. What if you both tried to call me at the same time? Maybe you could both get through and talk to each other. I came with that thing, didn't I tell you? No, really, it might work. Just count to 50 and give me time to go to the house. I'll answer it and you call for help. One, two, three. 50. 49, 5, 48, 6, 47, 46, 9, 10, 5, 11, 44, 43, 44, 45, 46, Mississippi, 47, Mississippi, 48, Mississippi, 49, Mississippi. Hey, Jeannie. Mom's inside. Just go ahead in. Okay. Oh, did you see that? What? Damn, he just took off to the trees, that big old telephone. Ah, he's been acting really peculiar lately. A telephone? Is that the one? How's it going to work out here? I think it's never going to work out here. Are you crazy? You must be crazy. You're, You're out, out of your, your mind. mind. 
Dean? Kathy? Did you forget something? No, I wanted to tell you in person right away the good news. Oh? I got your test results from last week. And you've come to make final arrangements for me, right? <laughs> no, I thought we'd go have dinner at the Davy Crockett or the Hop Knob to celebrate. Celebrate what? Your counts are the best they have been in 18 months. You're as perfect as a 20-year-old. You are out of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, let's go down there and see what he's up to. Listen, this phone wasn't working before. Whether in that house or down here, it hasn't worked in years. Somehow your calls for help are received by this phone. Don't ask me how, but I'm not crazy. Same thing happened to my pop. Now I brought it down here to show you that it's impossible to work. You wanna see for yourself? Try it. Kathy? Hello? Hello? Are you there? I'm here. This stupid thing doesn't work! I just wanted to see her. Just one more time. To tell her I'm sorry for crashing us that night. I thought I was too tough to tell her I love her. Kathy, wherever you are, I love you. If I've never said it then, I'm saying it now. Dean? I've always known.
me an apple butter and send me down the food hatch. Dean and Kathy, Pop's friends. Thank you. Yes. Mom, this is Dean Hall. Ma'am. Well, well, well. And this is Kathy Torrance. Hi. Oh, my. Oh, Tim, is this your wife? No, this is Jeannie. She's a really good friend. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I... Don't be, Kathy. I thought the same thing. Mm. Wanda! Jeannie, I'm a fool. No, you're just slow. <laughs> oh, this is my lovely mom, Wanda Lambert. You're Wanda? The Wanda? What? You know me? Miss Lambert, you're all Wendell ever talks about. <gasps> is he here too? No. He hasn't the strength here yet. Cast an eyeball on that. I think I see heaven. Right down that road. How far do you think heaven is from here? I don't know. Let's just follow the signs. I'll be waiting for you. Mom? Mom? Where are you going? What is it? I'll be waiting for you. But not too long. Well, I have all the time in the world and beyond. Until then, enjoy everything that you have. Tell our Tim that his future is standing next to him.
mom. Are you okay? Yes. Yes, I am. You too. <laughs> Did you happen to see my jacket laying anywhere around the area? <laughs> must be all over an attractive man like you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 